Hello, this short lesson will teach you how to use scientific and engineering modes in calculators. I'm going to use a TI-84 plus CE version of calculator, but many calculators will have these functions on them. The buttons may be in different places, but they should look similar. And I'm going to use this as an example for electronics students. Let's say I need to know how much current is flowing through a circuit. If I know I have, say, a 12 volt circuit, so I'll enter 12 on the calculator, divided by the amount of resistance, let's say I have uh, 890 ohms of resistance. Then it shows my current as 0 0.01348 amps of current. But if it's less than one amp, most people would express that in, in milliamps using metric units. So what I want to do is set up my calculator so that it will display in engineering mode. Let me show you the different modes of a calculator. If you click on the mode button here, there's normal, scientific, and this is engineering, not English. So if I wanted to select scientific, most people are a little more familiar from school with this one. I'll click over, select scientific, hit enter. Now I can clear my screen. If I typed the same numbers, 12 volts divided by 890 ohms, I get my answer with an exponent. So 1.348, whatever, to the negative 2. What that means is my original number should have the decimal point moved two places to the left. So if I went 1, 2, so you can see how it would be the same as 0 0.01348. Scientific mode is, is used for numbers that are very small or very large. You know, if you have a number that's way less than 1, going to be a point zero 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 something, it would be nicer to have it in scientific mode. Scientific mode always uses one number in front of the decimal point and then any number of digits after. Engineering mode is more used for electronics and I'll show you the difference there. So let's click mode, go over to engineering, select enter. I'm going to clear the screen and go back and type that same problem, 12 volts divided by 890 ohms. This time, I get 13.483 times 10 to the minus 3, or my exponent is to the minus 3. Engineering mode is set up so that the exponent is always in multiples of 3. That way, certain metric prefixes can just be memorized any multiple of 3. So if I just remember that milli is to the minus 3, then I can realize this is 13.48 milliamps. So you do have to memorize the metric prefixes that are associated with these exponents. Negative 3 is milli, negative 6 is micro, negative 9, nano, negative 12, pico. And if you have larger numbers as well, another problem I could show on my calculator using large numbers and small at the same time. If I have, say, 9 volts divided by, and this time I know the current, but I don't know the resistance, and I want to know the resistance, Let's say I have 2.6 milliamps. The way I would enter that on a calculator is 2.6. Go up and hit the second button, the blue button, and then see the little blue EE? That stands for exponent. So once I've activated that blue second button, I can click that. It now says I'm going to enter an exponent. And let's say I, I know it's milliamps, 2.6 milli. I have to remember milli is negative 3, so I type that on my calculator. Hit enter. And it tells me I have 3.46 to the third. My exponent is now to the third. So I have to remember exponents larger than one to the third, or if an exponent is three, that's kilo or kilo. Six is mega, nine is giga, and 12 is tera. So I would say this is 3.46 kilo ohms of resistance. So let me do one more example. Let's say I have a 5 volt source and I want to divide that by 1.75 milliamps. So again, 1.75 second EE and then milli is negative 3. That would show me that I have 2.857 kilo ohms because e to the 3 is kilo. So when you use this scientific calculator, you can use it in engineering mode and it'll keep the exponents in multiples of three so that you can use those metric prefixes more easily. And never get confused by trying to convert in your head. It's always easy to type it in the calculator correctly. So 
So I hope this has helped you learn how to use engineering mode on a calculator to make sure you use the correct units 